probably all of us know from personal experience that um, if you're trying to learn something well and you want to learn something that, that's going to remain with you, that you can retain for the long term, you know, one exposure, just, you know, one encounter with the information is probably going to be insufficient, right? So, you know, you've heard things like practice makes perfect. And even just from personal experience, you know, just one shot, you know, one encounter with a set of materials isn't likely to promote long-term retention. So we know we, in order to retain something well, it's probably the case that we need to re-encounter, revisit, review the information again and again, and maybe the more times, the better. But one question that perhaps a student or a learner is confronted with is when to review the information? When should we revisit the information again? And does the, the timing matter? You know, or, it, it does it, or does it not matter um, when you actually revisit the information? As long as you plug in a lot of time studying the information, you know, your retention is going to be good. What's interesting is that there is really a, a a wealth of research done by uh, memory researchers, by cognitive psychologists, by educational psychologists that have, um, you know, this research evidence has really converged on the idea that timing does matter. That if you're trying to learn something well and have you know, retain the information for the long term, you benefit way more if you space out um, your review opportunities or your review sessions. What that means is, you know, you may encounter the material for the first time, right? It could be you read a textbook, a chapter of your textbook for the first time, and, you know, and then instead of rereading the chapter right after, you might decide to wait a while. Maybe I'll wait a day or two or maybe the following week, and then I'll revisit that chapter again, right? And if you compare a student who reads a chapter and rereads the same chapter again, and you compare that against a second student who reads the chapter and then waits a period of time and then rereads the chapter again, you'll find that it's in the second case uh, where you'll find that the student is much more likely uh, to hold on and retain that information for a longer period of time. And of course, you know this is referred to in the literature as the spacing effect, right? The idea of spacing out your review opportunities, spacing out when you revisit or re encounter the information again. Again, uh, it benefits your learning and your long-term retention a, a great deal, right? Compared to sort of uh, revisiting stuff back to back or consecutively. What this means is that students need to be. Uh, perhaps careful with how they plan out uh, their, their study or their academic activities, right? So if you don't do any planning, then you know, you wait till sort of maybe the day before the exam or the day before some important event where you need to use the information or the, that you're trying to learn. If you don't plan it out, then chances are there isn't, there won't be the opportunity for you to space out uh, your study uh, activities or your, your review of the information. And so in order to utilize the spacing effect, um, often some amount of sort of planning needs to be to go into um, um, your study activities. Some some forethought into how you're going to space out your, your study activity. Space practice or space retrieval, really, um, because of its uh, uh, power, you know, to promote learning and its utility in, 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 um, uh, in educational practice, um, at the end of the day, what it does is it promotes effective learning in an efficient way. So what this means, and I want to mention this topic of efficiency because it means that per unit time, you gain more. Right? So we're not talking about the case where we're expecting a student to devote two times as much effort and time into you know, trying to study the material. The unit time is the same, but you gain much more. So in, in a sense, you, know, you sort of get more bang for your buck. Right? And, and so it seems like a no-brainer that, that students should try to engage in you know, those kind, these kinds of efficient learning strategies as much as they can. Right? And once that promotes their learning and reduces their forgetting of the information in the long term, that also means it frees up their time to focus on other things. Mm -hmm.